those of you who joined, uh, what is it about this Zoom class that made you want to join? Any excuse <laughs> to learn more about the world. Awesome. Yeah, I'm always looking for more practical ways to use it, use the oils. So that was why I joined. Cool. I think I saw my you kids last are Monday, excited Deborah. about good to meet you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Christy. My kids are excited about uh, a pillow spray. Ooh, oh, pillow me too. Spray. Yeah, we've got some fun um, stickers on our pillow spray. They look like they're asleep. Um, and you might not be able to see that because I'm talking through my other camera. Oh, look. There we go. Over there. Um, well, I'm excited about it uh, because I just have been making these kinds of things. Um, I'm Marty Copeland, by the way. Um, I've been using essential oils for about five or six years. Well, Kinley is my daughter. She's six now. So I guess I've been using essential oils for six years. That's how I remember when I first was introduced to Young Living and um, wanted to um, be able to, you know, get the health benefits from them. And then gradually I started becoming aware of the ingredients in the things in my house and thinking, oh, I could make something comparable to that with this powerful um, collection of essential oils I have. And, um, and just, especially in the last couple of years, it's been um, more and more. So I was gonna start by um, sharing my screen and telling you um, a little bit about um, what we're gonna do in this class. Okay, so sprays three ways. It's gonna be about 30 minutes. Um, we're gonna kind of do one spray bottle, um, but you can make it whatever you want it to be. Um, so there are so many sprays. I just kind of walked through my house today and thought of all of them. Um, there's, you know, breath spray, snore spray, throat spray, mask spray nowadays, um, mermaid hair spray I've been hearing about recently, um, sunburn spray, bug spray, lots of cleaner sprays like window spray, um, poopery spray. Um, so all kinds of things you can uh, make in a spray bottle. Um, and the ones that we're going to look at tonight are a perfume, like a body spray, and a room spray, which is exactly the same ingredients as the perfume that you'll see there. Whatever you're spraying in the air around you can also go on your skin when you're using natural products like essential oils and witch hazel and water. And then linen spray, um, which is, I'm gonna share my pillow spray recipe that is a great linen spray. Um, and I've, I can share some other ways that I've used that too, um, but none of the yuck. So um, first I'm gonna tell you why I use Young Living essential oils. Um, they are, um, they, the quality of the seed to seal promise from Young Living is really important. Anything you're putting on your body or breathing in, um, you want to know what's in it and, and that it's been um, developed in a really natural way. So the seed to sell promise is Young Living's um, promise that everything has been um, vetted from um, seed to seal. So before they plant it all the way through the growing process um, and then as they distill it and put it into the bottles and seal the bottles, um, they know everything that's happening to that product and they test it a lot with um, internal labs and also third party tests. And that, that matters to me and they, I know they're using no um, no chemicals or um, pesticides and they're hand weeding and you can even visit the farms. And um, so it's a real quality, um, a real quality thing for me. So you can learn more about that if you are interested. Um, and then I wanted to share, I'm gonna um, switch over to spotlight my, um, spotlight this for just a second. And I wanted to show you a body spray that I 
<laughs> trying to figure out where the camera is. Um, so this is just a fun little body spray that I got um, back in, you can kind of see, can you see the price there? What does it say? $10? Is it upside down? Yeah. Marty, can you stop share screen so we can see it? Oh, is that, that's good. Yep. There okay, go. so I'm just holding up a body spray that I got from a major retailer um, about two, 20 years ago, probably. I'm, I'm um, not a minimalist, so I have a lot of things. Um, and I kept it because it was a special Thing that I was going to um, use on a trip that I was on. I, I was uh, overseas for an extended period. And you, we know that aromatherapy and the power of smell is really um, connected to memories. And so I had heard from another friend who traveled overseas that like they took this um, special body spray with them, whichever, you know, favorite flavor they had. And, um, and then they, every time they smelled it after that, they remembered their time in, in that country. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna do that. And I bought this um, citrus punch body splash from a major retailer. And I was just gonna, um, I remember, I was taking a look today since I still had it at everything that's in it. You know, it's, it's denatured alcohol and water and fragrance, which is perfume. That's a synthetic perfume. Um, and then propylene glycol, benzophenone 2, aloe barbadensis extract. That's, you're telling me it's going to moisturize my skin. And then they list the different um, orange, lemon, and lime extracts, yellow number five and red number 33. So um, even though this looks like really clean and sweet and smells great, um, if you look a little closer, I noticed that benzophenone 2 um, I looked it up. It's a UV protectant. So it's just in there to kind of extend the shelf life of this product so that the things in it don't get um, harmed by UV light, I guess. And I was wondering if I would want that on my skin. So I looked up the material safety data sheet. We do that at work. Um, and so I thought, well, I could do that here. And um, sure enough, it says it's, um, it can be harmful to skin and it is an irritant to the respiratory tract. And I was spraying this on my body for six months and breathing it in. And so um, just an eye-opening thing, you know, I used it a long time ago, but um, the things we're gonna use in our recipe tonight um, won't have that. I was gonna share just another one too. Um, this is a fun sleep spray. It's, a, it's called a, a Air of Sleep and I got it at um, a spa package in the London airport during a layover. And um, it has lavender, bergamot, and Lang Lang. Um, and then it also has, you know, al denatured alcohol and water, but then it has, um, you know, the fragrance, the perfume. And then, so even though it says it has essential oils, it also has synthetic things in it. And then I was taking a look at this throat spray um, that's supposed to keep you from snoring. And it also has essential oils, wintergreen and peppermint and anise. And then it has things like sodium benzoate and sodium saccharin, and that's an artificial sweetener. And um, so I just thought, okay, all of these things that we buy that um, I'm sure they do really great things, but what else are they doing? And anyway, so moving on to the fun stuff, I'm going to move my spotlight here and um, spotlight this for everyone. Um, we're going to be doing a, um, a spray bottle recipe. So I've got a glass bottle here. Mine are four ounce bottles and I've got my essential oils. We'll talk about some blending. Um, and we're going to use witch hazel. Um, I, I got mine at Target and it's just this, um, you know, 16 ounce bottle, which by the way, um, was $3 and 69 cents. So that's about 23 cents an ounce. Um, and then when we get to the linen spray, I've got this vodka. Um, I'm trying to <laughs> see what I'm showing you. So Vodka is going to be our choice when we talk about linen spray or pillow spray um, because you don't want to put water on, um, on fabric. It will take too long to dry. 
And you could do a test, you know, witch hazel will dry a little bit faster than water. So if you don't have um, alcohol, you can use witch hazel instead. Um, but in our room spray and our perfume or body spray, we can use water. And I'm gonna use witch hazel with those because I don't necessarily want alcohol um, on my skin for my body spray, even though I clearly read to you from these other ingredient bottles that um, they do have alcohol in them. Um, so, and witch hazel has a little bit of alcohol too. Um, another reason we're adding vodka or witch hazel is because it's, an, um, it's thought to be an emulsifier. I've done a lot of research the last few weeks about emulsifiers, um, you know, the substance that allows the water and the oil to mix. And, um, and so it looks like witch hazel is not a true emulsifier and even vodka isn't. You'd have to have 190 proof or 190 grain um, alcohol and vodka is only 80 proof. Um, so Everclear is what's recommended if you want to get a, a real um, emulsifier for that's an alcohol-based emulsifier. Um, and so I was going to demonstrate that because I wasn't really sure when I was reading about it. And I think you can see my, because I put the white, but this is just um, witch hazel I'm putting at the bottom of my thing. And then I know that my peace and calming will show up on the witch hazel um, because it's green. Have you noticed that? Or yellow. And so if we are able to see it, it's going to make the, the witch hazel turn a color, but it's also, um, it's also kind of sitting on top of that. It's a little bit sitting on top of, I guess maybe you can't see that. Um, but if we mix it up, you can see that it does kind of you just have to shake it. So what we're gonna do is what all the recipes online say to do, and we're just gonna um, put the ingredients into our bottle and we're gonna shake them all the time. The other ingredient I have is down here. Let me pick it up. Um, it's distilled water, um, also just uh, 99 cents at the grocery store. And um, so if you look at uh, my, oh, I didn't tell you my price for my vodka, 650, it's one of the cheapo ones. Um, and so it comes out to 25 cents per ounce. And um, if we think that we're gonna use in a body spray about an ounce of um, witch hazel and three ounces of water, and then my, my bottle here, um, I bought it from a, in a set. It's a glass spray bottle. You wanna use glass because essential oils can um, break down plastics and then those plastic, um, particles can, um, can get mixed into what you're using. And you definitely wouldn't want to have that on your skin or breathing it in um, necessarily. So anyway, this was a six pack for $8. So about $1.33 each. So what I'm going to make tonight, um, excluding the price of my essential oils is going to be less than $2 in ingredients. And, um, and so I think it's great that I still had my old body splash that had the $10 um, price tag on it to show me like, yeah, someone else made it and took their time, but um, I'm taking my time and I'm going to um, have, I'm going to have something that costs a lot less. So um, I mentioned a lot of the other ones. So I've made um, poo spray and I had a cute little label for it that I made. Um, that's the one you put on the toilet before you go. And then I also made, um, I've made like pantry spray to kill the moths and mosquito repellent. And I got to the habit of just putting the recipe on the label so that I remember what goes in there because I'm refilling the bottle all the time. Um, so I, it's not cutesy. I'm not doing like DIY crafty art here. I'm literally writing on there mosquito repellent, how many drops of each thing I put in, and then, you know, half tablespoon of this and a fourth cup of that. Um, so, um, and this one is a metal spray bottle from the dollar store um, because we have it outside with us a lot. Um, anyway, but same ingredients, witch hazel, a little splash of vodka, some water, some distilled water. Distilled water is going to be less of a, um, I guess you can read about the water-based sprays and they may not have, they could go rancid. The water can um, be a vector for 
bacteria and that so distilled water would be less of a problem. But even so, you're going to want to mix up a solution that is going to be used pretty um, quickly. Or some people keep it in the refrigerator if it's a water-based spray um, so that it um, doesn't go rancid. All right, before I keep going, any questions about everything we've talked about? <laughs> OK. Then we're going to keep going now, and um, I'm going to switch gears to a. Um, I'm going to switch back to. That's, the, no, that's not it. Um, I've got to find the notes. There we go. So we're going to um, look together really quick at. Um, how to mix a blend. So um, I just, I have this in a couple of books that you can um, make your own blends by mixing top, middle, and base notes. But I thought it'd be useful to just show you where you could find that yourself. I just did a um, internet search for um, the, you know, essential oil, top, middle, and base notes. The top notes are basically the ones that are going to evaporate the fastest, you're gonna smell those first. Those are all your citrusy, um, citrusy essential oils, also peppermint. Um, middle notes are gonna be, they're pretty floral, um, like geranium, but cinnamon, citronella. Um, looking at the list, you might notice some of the ones you have. Um, lavender can be a top and a middle. And then um, the base notes are really earthy. So we're thinking of frankincense and cedarwood, um, sandalwood, myrrh. Looks like myrrh can be uh, middle or base. Um, and they are going to be the ones that um, kind of stick around a little bit longer. So let's see, I have. Um, also wanted to share one of the um, uh, one of the resources I use um, is the essential oils reference desk reference. Poc I have the pocket reference. Thank you, Libby. Um, and so I have a lot of different things in here I can look up. But then I went to the library and um, and also have been reading about. Um, different, this is the healing power of essential oils and I have one, the heart of aromatherapy. Um, and so it's really good because it's not, um, you know, it's, they're not, they've got a ton of recipes in there, but they're, they're not really selling any particular brand, but they're, they're telling you to look at the brand you use and make sure that it's high quality. And, um, and so I'm glad we already talked about that, but this was an interesting page, um, in here where it's just the top, middle, and base notes of um, the different essential oils. And you can kind of get the idea. So that said, um, a lot of the blends that are popular and a lot of the recipes that I find even on the Young Living blog um, don't use top, middle, and base notes. <laughs> so, um, you know, take all the information you find, go do all your research and then do whatever you want is kind of the, the lesson I get from that. Um, and so what we're gonna make, I'll get back to that. Um, so let me go back to spotlighting this one. All right, so we're going to just mix it right into the jar. I have my funnel because of the distilled water, but I'm not sure I'm gonna need it. Um, so I'm gonna try a body spray today and I've been seeing a lot like there's an abundance um, perfume recipe on the Essential Ed um, Facebook page. You can just search on that and find it. Um, and I, of all of the, I'm going to try a top, middle, and base note for mine. Um, but of everything that they said, I really only have like cedarwood and vetiver um, and frankincense as base notes. Um, and... Um, so I'm going to, cedarwood's my very favorite oil of all, um, maybe a close second to um, lemongrass, but I'm going to go ahead and 
just put, um, so I'm gonna do four ounce bottle and I'm gonna do about 20 to 25 drops total. So I think I just did six of cedarwood. Um, and I'm, I'm not going off of a recipe I found anywhere, but I'm just using things that I think are gonna be really nice. Um, orange is one that I love. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put um, lavender in the middle of those. And actually this could be an awesome sleep spray because all of those are pretty calming. All right, so I just did, I'm gonna squeeze in some, I'm doing, um, I'm eyeballing it. That's another thing about the way I cook and do recipes. I can share with you the actual recipe, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So I'm gonna mix together and let which hazel be whatever emulsifier it's gonna be for me. I'm smelling it. it. Smells pretty good. Witch hazel does have a little bit of a smell to it. Um, so that's why I'm gonna use um, the distilled water. And that's why I have my funnel. So I did, I think I did a total of 18 drops of essential oils because I want to have a little wiggle room to adjust it. And I probably did a, a tablespoon of witch hazel. I'm going to add a little more. Tablespoon of witch hazel. Are you still seeing it sort of? And then I'm going to just um, fill about to the halfway point with distilled water. Because like I said, I don't wanna use this up if I, um, if I hate my blend I made. Then I'm going to shake it. So I don't even really need my measuring spoons, which I have here. So I'm gonna shake it up. And like, because we talked about how the emulsifier thing, it's not gonna be a perfect emulsifier. Um, it is always gonna need to be shaken. So every time you pick it up, you're gonna shake it and that's gonna disperse the oils into the liquid better every time. Um, of course, the spray mechanism disperses everything really well too, but what we're trying to do is avoid getting um, the droplets um, you know, really too, we want it, we want it diluted um, so it's not too strong. Okay, so I'm just gonna see, I'll spray it on my hand. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. And I'm gonna tweak it a tad <laughs> because I think I don't smell the orange as much as I want to. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. There's, um, let me, I'll switch gears here after I tweak it now that I'm, because I'm thinking about what I'm doing. All right, spray it on this one. All right, that's how I do it. That cedar wood is coming through so nicely. The orange is beautiful. Um, and so that's gonna be good. So um, let me stop where I am now and you guys tell me what questions we have. It looks like there's a little bit on the chat. Um, some more folks that like cedarwood if you, um, yes. Okay, so the pillow spray, is the last thing I'm gonna give away my secret recipe of how we love pillow spray in here. It is, um, it's half witch hazel and half water. Um, Dr. Z, Eric Zielinski. Um, so he's saying that you're gonna use, for every ounce of distilled water, you're gonna use 10 drops of grain alcohol, 10 drops of witch hazel, and 10 drops of essential oils. Um, and you can do 20 internet, you can look at 20 different DIY sleep spray recipes and find 20 different combinations of all of these same products. Um, so use what you have and, and enjoy it. But um, I use, um, Mine is just cedarwood and peace and calming, and I used um, equal amounts of both. 
But there are some blends here listed, um, sleepy time blends, um, Dr. Z. So Frank, Myrrh and Vetiver, Cedarwood, Sandalwood, Valerian. Those are all base notes, by the way. Um, orange, Palmarosa and Patchouli. And then one that is almost an exact same blend as what is in um, Peace of Calming. And then the um, Sleepy Time, what he calls his Sleepy Time one, is Roman Chamomile, Lavender, and Vetiver. We love Vetiver too. I, I, do, I think I did put a couple of drops of Vetiver in my um, Cedarwood and Peace and Calming blend um, to try it out. I should have written it on the label like I showed with my other ones. Instead, I used cute stickers and now I've forgotten what's in there. Anyway, um, that brings us to just a few minutes left. I wanna respect your time, but what ideas or questions you have is kind of exciting to be able to make a ton of different sprays with just a few simple ingredients and to know that it's safe for your body. Um, but I may not have answered everything that you had in mind, so. Anyone? Marty, I'd love to know what you or what other people use for uh, perfume. What's your favorite perfume? Oh, um, I actually just use, um, I just, I was gonna mention this too. You can just use a roll on. I mean, people, a lot of people use a roll on and you can use whatever blend you like in a roller and, and a, you know, mix it into a spray. Um, same with diffusing anything you like diffusing in a room, you can make it into a spray um, because you might not, you know, you might be on the go or traveling. Um, but my favorite perfume is um, it's gratitude. <laughs> so I tested for it um, back the last time we got to test on the Itovi scanner. Um, and so I bought it and sure enough, I love gratitude. I'll, I even got the leather um, some leather earrings and I'll put a drop on them and, um, and kind of have it around me. So what do the linen sprays do to your actual linens? Do they stain them? They don't. There are some essential oils that you would want to test in an incon inconspicuous spot first. Um, so like I showed you, the Peace and Calming has a color to it. Um, so the linen spray that I use does not um, stain. So the vodka isn't gonna stain your clothes. It's gonna evaporate really fast, which is what you want on linen. Um, this, it can be used on, I have a, a suit jacket that I don't wanna have to dry clean very often. And so I'll, I sprayed a combination of vodka and I think I picked cedarwood um, and just made a cedarwood linen spray that I used on that, on those um, clothing pieces that I didn't want to take to the dry cleaners. Um, and it's actually, you know, kind of like pioneer life. People used to use vodka to just like kill the bacteria on clothing or not vodka, but whatever grain alcohol you could find um, to just kill the bacteria on clothing and, and stop the smells. Um, so the stuff that I made doesn't stain the sheets that I sprayed on, the pillows and the sheets. It just kind of leaves a nice smell. And having witch hazel in it, um, I might have mentioned witch, witch hazel is a soothing um, product. If, if it's directly on your skin, it's good for anti-inflammatory um, benefits for your skin. But I don't know if I'm getting that benefit from it when I'm sleeping on it after, you know, because I do have it in my sleep spray. Um, but at least I know I'm not getting something bad. 